Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today's video focuses on the LAAT, or better known as the Republic Gunship. And for quite a long time now, probably ever since the web store began, this has been the single most requested mock you guys wanted to see us make here on the channel. And this original design came from the builder David Buckles. This gunship was first seen in episode two, Attack of the Clones, but I feel like it really uh, made an impact with the audience and sort of embedded itself as an awesome, awesome ship during the several seasons of the Clone Wars TV show. It was excellent in air-to-air -air combat as well as air-to-ground combat and it could transport supplies as well as troops with all these different kinds of variations which means basically you saw it in almost every single battle and they often play a key role in some of the coolest action scenes from the entire series. So it's no wonder why the LAAT has become one of the more beloved ships outside of the original trilogy. Amongst LEGO fans alone it's probably one of the single most recreated Star Wars mocks out there. So when thinking of a model for our web store, we wanted to make sure to get the absolute coolest and best version we could possibly find. Speaking of which, the instructions, the building instructions for the LAAT or Republic Gunship can be found at our web store. That is www.brickfault.toys. Included with any purchase are the PDF step-by-step -step building instructions, as well as a digital parts list file that you can easily upload online, which allows you to buy the necessary pieces very, very quickly. Purchases from our web store are a great great way to help support us here at the channel as well as the amazingly talented as you're about to see designers that we work with like David. So jumping into the finer details of the model first let's get into all the different functions and what I think is absolutely excellent about this model right off the bat is that it really handles and feels a lot like a playset in terms of both durability as well as interactive play features. So like you could probably assume you can fit two minifigs into the cockpit. These guys don't stud into place. They can just simply rest on the inside though and they don't really seem to jiggle around. And then for a better look at the actual cockpit interior itself, you can see the seat is somewhat tan. We got some cheese wedge pieces that make up the headrest and a simple printed tile for a control console for either the pilot or the guy that operates a lot of the guns. Now as you might have seen from a shot earlier, there are different things that you can attach to the front of the gunship depending on what type of mission uh, this thing's got to be running. The more common one by far is of course the pair of uh, laser beam turrets, those dome turrets that clone troopers can actually fit inside of. The attachment process is pretty simple. You pull out this barrel piece, sometimes that little Technic crossbar also comes out which you just have to stud back into the little yellow point there. And then for the final fitting, praise be the mixel joint, you can connect this uh, brick built dome on either side of the ship. From there it's very easy to change around the orientation of these turrets turrets on either side. There's plenty of friction with that mixel joint being used and taking the pieces off and replacing them again is extremely, extremely easy. Now for the second attachment, there are also some giant floodlights. These were used in foggy or dense atmosphere for when they needed to make a landing with low visibility so they could see a little bit better. Personally, I always thought it was a pretty good indication for ground fire to shoot back up at them, but that's just me. Anyways, you can totally attach those pieces as well. Personally, I always thought that the Republic gunship looked best without those big clunky domes hanging off the side so I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and then this is where I think the build really excels with those sliding doors that open on either side they're connected just by one Technic link arm and another little connection point just at the top no connection at the bottom which is similar to how the previous sets worked and it's wonderful to see that that entire function is completely hidden away on the internals of the ship as opposed to having some ugly arms sticking out the back like we saw from regular Lego sets. You can comfortably stand three minifigures sort of shoulder to shoulder, that being at the closest edge to the outside, but there's also plenty of studs on the interior and I haven't tested it, but I have a feeling you could probably comfortably uh, stand or seat maybe 10 figs without too much trouble. And then uncomfortably, who knows, you could maybe stuff the hull with, uh, I don't know how many troops, according to the uh, uh, Wikipedia, it says there's 30 guys that can fit 
it on the inside. But you know, minifigs, of course, are much, much wider for their height when you actually try to make them anywhere near proportional to human sizes. Needless to say, there's plenty of space on the inside, and the doors can close without a hitch, which is so nice. There is what feels like maybe a tiny bit of looseness just when you kind of touch the doors a little bit. They don't snap into place necessarily, but the main thing that we're really happy about is the fact that the seam, the line between the walls and the actual sliding doors is extremely minimal. Now, I almost forgot about this feature later when I was editing this, but you can open up the hatch in the back. There are no studs there to have uh, figures posed directly on the hatch door, but the function itself works smoothly. It has plenty of friction and it doesn't catch on anything. Now, when it comes to the last function or two, you have the posable uh, rear turret in the back that you can move around all you like. And then when you turn the model around back to the front, you have the two chin mounted turrets that also have as much posability as you'd ever want. Now that is technically it for interactive features, but of course there's plenty of other details to focus on. Let me just finish off all of the weapons. We might as well. The top canopy has the exposed missile pods. They don't move. You can just see a couple of the rows that would feed into those large launchers on the sides. And then it would be pretty cool if that little windscreen piece did come in the trans black, but no matter, David did manage to build both of the laser beams that point up and down on the inside. Here, I think it's worth mentioning that he included an alternate build. This kind of mimics a more play function with a set like this model really can be played with quite a lot, which is great. And if you wanted a similar build style to like how those domed laser beam builds on the front are, you can also fit figs into the wings as well, which was a feature of a playset, though I don't really remember that being part of the actual physical universe. Anyways, you can do that if you like. There is an alternate version of parts and building instructions for this version of the model as well. Now, apologies, we don't have the 2013, the latest version of the gunship set 75201. We do, however, have the 2008 version of the set that we'd like to compare very quickly. Right off the bat, you'll see the smoothness of the mock and the general size proportions uh, are really no match when checking out the Lego playset from over 10 years ago. But also you'll note that the general size is actually a bit smaller. It looks like most, if not all, mock makers decide to make the ship a little bit smaller than what the play scale was. And from any standard of measurement that we use here in the studio, we're pretty sure this is very accurate to fig scale. That is something that we really try to pay attention to, especially when it comes to models that are within the Star Wars universe coming out from the web store. We would like them all to be uh, interactable and look proportional to each other within the same universe. So I'm happy to say David's model here is absolutely on point. And then let me focus on just a couple of the smaller details that I think are definitely worth taking a slightly closer look at. The red wing plate used on the upper part of the main wing of the model is attached with the mixel joint. I'd like that a lot just because most of the other models use slope pieces when in reality there is no curve in that part of the ship. And then the integration of the dark red outlining that goes around the cockpit pit. Uh, that's always extremely difficult for any builder to get looking good, but I'd say David's approach is particularly excellent because you can see just a little bit of that red uh, stitching, at least I call it stitching, where you can see the red popping up and down between the white on either sides. If you take a closer look at the model there, you can see that it's similar to how that detailing would go within universe. And then really that nose is a work of art in terms of the way he got it to round over right in the front. It's this place in the model in particular that when I look at even some of the best other custom models out there, nobody gets the shape quite like David does here in the front. And it's really solid too. Even that little black shield piece is not sort of an extra part. There is that little dark triangle that you see match up with the black line in the front. Here there is a lot going on, which I just think would be terrible if I skipped it and didn't mention it. Now, finally, when it comes to the handling of this model, uh, I don't know if you've been able to tell, but I have been treating this thing like it's any old Lego playset. The only difference is there's a lot of little pieces in here that are more tightly packed, so it's certainly a heavy set. But in terms of structural stability, I can't even find like little pieces of greebling that fall off too easily. This really is something that you can pick up from just about all major angles. And this is absolutely not a model that you need to be treating gingerly. Also, custom mocks, if you're familiar with building a lot of them, sometimes have have those breaks where if it does happen, it's like a huge pain in the butt to put it back together because it's super complicated. 
can't say I've run into any frustrating breaks on this model. Obviously, because of the sheer weight of this mock, I'm not going to be picking this thing up by any of its smaller extremities, but that's just sort of common sense at the end of the day. And I'm happy to say that this is probably the single strongest or one of the absolute strongest models that is currently in the web store right now. And speaking of which, I feel like I've hit all the major details I wanted to for this model. Remember, we do sell the PDF step-by-step -step instructions at www.brickvault.toys. There are alternate bits of the build, like for the wings, that you also get included with this model. And technically, this is the first build of David's that has gone up in the web store, but it will not be the last. Remember, guys, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. Let me know what types of models you want to see us do in the future. And like always, we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.